We all kind of have multiple personalities. Don't believe me? How about that time you really did want to study Japanese, but instead ended up playing League of Legends or Final Fantasy XIV all night? Netflix binge anyone? I actually figured out how to solve this conundrum almost by accident, and I'm gonna show you how I did it. So, that guy who really did want to study Japanese, he has no power over the one who wants to get comfy with a video game or Netflix binge. It's almost as if those two have no connection with each other whatsoever. When the part of you that wants to speak Japanese comes back from the dungeon that Comfy Dude put him in, he feels all guilty and promises he'll really study this time and quit doing all the easy stuff. But then the Comfy Dude stuffs him back down into that dungeon. The issue here is the massive disconnect. They aren't the same person. They barely even know about each other. And they certainly don't have much power over each other because they think they're the same person. What happens is the one that is easiest and makes you feel the best, the fastest, almost always wins. It's only when the guilt overpowers those good feelings that you end up doing the harder stuff. Or when there's a deadline that would hurt more than the good things feel good. When we were kids, we often had someone that we were accountable to. Whether that was parents, teachers, guardians, it doesn't matter. But other people kept us on the right track. We didn't want to study math? Well, an angry mom would take care of that. But what do people who don't have that do if they want to do something difficult? Like modern adults or you? Some of you look for solutions in groups of others doing the same thing. In discords or by going to a school for adults. But how many of you have ghosted those groups? Or have been ghosted by them? How many language learning discords or reddits have you joined only to spend your free hour or two each day talking about learning instead of, you know, actually learning? Most people never end up reaching their potential because who they really need to be accountable to isn't other people or teachers. It's the first person we mentioned in the video. The one that wants to learn new things. I wasn't actually looking to solve this problem when I started doing what solved it. I watched this video by a friend of mine called Desu. In it, he shows how he goes about journaling. It seemed like an interesting way to track goals and, well, journal. But I wasn't prepared in the least for just how effective it was going to be at helping me achieve goals. The reason I think it was so effective is that it bridged the gap between those two dudes. Er, 20 dudes. I don't know how many you've got living inside of you, but I've got a lot. Anyway, this makes all the bad ones accountable to the good one. Not to mention, it helps you say no to the bad habits you want to quit feeding. And if you don't feed them, they starve. And eventually, they lose their power over you. And the more you feed the good ones, the more strong that they get. So enough background. Let's break down exactly how to do this in about a minute. First, get out a piece of paper or a notebook. I'll link some possible options in the description. List down all the days left in the month in the left margin. At the top of the page, write exactly what you want to work on. For those of you who are taking our Japanese course over on tokiniandy.com, for example, maybe 15 minutes of kanji study, 15 minutes of grammar study, 15 minutes of shadowing practice, and 15 minutes of reading and listening to graded reading material. That way you cover all the bases. You then put checkboxes between every single one. Next to all that, write down the things you don't want to do. No League of Legends, or just 30 minutes of League of Legends for those of you who need to ease into things. Under 30 minutes of social media is a good one. No Netflix, no porn, etc. For the first month, keep it simple and ideally realistic. You can bump up the difficulty in later months, and if you feel like doing more one day, that counts too. Obviously. Maybe even just choose one or two things for your first month. Then, and this is the important part, at the end of every day, check off the ones you succeeded at. Here's the catch. If you failed, you need to write why over on the next page. I'm not currently studying Japanese, but with this journaling method, I started practicing piano for 30 plus minutes per day. Before I started, I couldn't play piano at all, and I couldn't read music either. Yet, after a month, I can do this. Imagine how far you could get with your goals in just a month. What helps me most is that when I'm about to do one of the things that I 
don't want to do and that are on my list, I tend to catch myself way more than before because I know I won't be able to check that box later. And that first dude is never happy about that because he's usually the one doing the box checking. Not to mention, knowing that someone might read that journal one day makes me really want to check as many of those boxes and not fail at the embarrassing ones as much as possible. That's another reason that doing this in a physical notebook is great. There's a lot less chance someone will find your online journal someday, but a physical one? That added risk gives me the added kick I need when I don't feel like doing something. Let me know in the comments if you're going to give this a shot. And if you do, come back in a couple weeks and let me know if it worked for you. And if it does, hit the like button and the subscribe button. It really helps. I think.